Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. They finally dropped in the game, which is awesome. Over on the test server, link in the description if you want to know how to get onto it. First of all, po apologies if I look and sound horrible. I just woke up. I normally train before I record, but uh, we had to get in there with this one because they happened to drop them straight after I went to sleep. So as you can see, uh, six hours ago, they dropped them in a hot fix. Yes, I don't sleep too long. I'm spewing, I missed it, but uh, you know, these things happen. Anyway, uh, in this, just quickly in the notes, they basically say that they're both in the game. They, they say that they're both in the shop at a certain point. They're not in the shop yet, so we can't buy them. But um, they will be in the shop. However, only one will be discounted, which kind of sucks. I feel like just do a nice one by your player base. However, I'm assuming that the collab cost them a bit, so they want to recoup money. I don't know. Who cares? It's going to be cool. I've got a moth flying into the camera, which sucks. Uh, and then also says that there's going to be an event for both of them, um, but we don't know what that is yet. I'll cover that once we know what the event is and how you're going to get them. Um, and then finally, uh, for free to play players, you'll be able to exchange on the 21st of December, which is a long way away. But, you know, it will be exchangeable. We'll have to see how much it costs and whether we're going to be able to get both of them. And then they did this hotfix, which adjusted some of the values, which we're going to go into their skills and all that stuff. Um, look at the skill ups, which we didn't know, and look at the changing in values um, since the last we saw from the data mining. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we have Alberto. Now, can we just say that the designs do look sick? Like, I love this. She's got the axe. I'd love it if they gave her a skin which had the armor. Uh, that would be absolutely savage because her armor looks wicked. Same with Irons. I'd love it if they had a skin which was like his warrior dual, dual sword wielding armor. That would be sick. But, you know, that would probably be too much of a change because he's then no longer a caster. But anyway, let's take a look. Um, there's the 2D art, which is once again fantastic. They've implemented this so well. I'm absolutely pumped. Anyway, let's take a look at the abilities we have gone through these before but now we have multipliers we have skill ups and we have some changes to the signature item exclusive furniture so let's do it uh alberto instantly teleports to the most densely populated area of enemies and deals 300 aoe damage to all nearby enemies 45 percent of the total damage dealt to enemies is converted into a shield which has a duration of eight seconds then it goes 55 percent and 65 percent so aoe with a shield not too bad not a huge multiplayer, but decent at the 300. Um, El <laughs> nothing compared to Irons. Alberto receives a shield with a value equal to 220% of her attack rating, after which she teleports next to the backline ally that has the lowest health and protects them for five seconds. While the shield exists, neither Alberto nor the enemy, uh, the ally she is protecting can be controlled by enemies, and Alberto shall bear all of the damage intended for the ally. If, the, if Ains is on the team, she'll prioritize him, which is cool. So not a massive shield at 270% of attack rating, but the fact that you're both immune to cc as like if if you're in the back row and you're not sort of getting hit that hard and then you can just have five minutes of immunity to cc i see this as being like a nice counter to a um a god comp or something like that like this is going to be useful in any team i feel like when irons is in the team he may not always be the one you want to use it on uh so she's going to be definitely splashable around teams to make things really nice um this one here alberto teleports next to the ally that is currently near uh, that is currently near an enemy and deals 220% damage uh, to the enemy, stunning them for 4 seconds. If the hero Ains is on the team, she'll prioritize him, and the damage increases 280% with the skill ups. Once again, this one, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, going to Ains always sounds weird to me if there is no enemy near him, so we'll have to see how that goes. Also, it says um, Alberto teleports next to a random ally that is currently near an enemy and stuns the enemy. So I don't know if it's a single target or whether there's a bunch of them stacked, whether it's going to be AOE, because you guys know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Chicken ear on. Had to say it, just kidding. All right. Uh, during battle, Alberto crit resistance is increased by 35 points. If Alberto is dealt a critical strike, the attacker's attack rating is reduced by 30% for five seconds. Not too bad. Um, and her crit resistance goes up to 50, and their attack rating gets reduced by 50% for five seconds. Really nice. Like, there's some really nice stuff going on here. She's really just a supportive character until you get her exclusive furniture. Now we look at the signature item. Now, I had a bunch of messages saying, because before 
these this came in. Um, there was like a Chinese leak, with, which is re- very blurry, that said 15% for this. Um, when she dropped into the game, I got a hell of a lot of messages saying, she's she's actually 40 she's actually 25 percent like the numbers haven't changed then they did the second hot fix so basically it's the same way as it was before um during the battle defense of all dimensionals is increased by 15 percent you've got to have three of them, uh two from the field to get it then it can stack three times um then yeah so previously what i'm trying to say is previously it was 15 then 10 was uh 45 now it's uh sorry previously it was 25 45 now it's 15 25 so it's been nerfed fairly heavily but still a 75 percent damn uh defense rating increase for all dimensionals is still nice like it's it's not as much as it was but it's still really solid uh and then we have the final one which is the attack um during battle the attack ratings is increased by 15 percent stacks up to three times so that's going to be a 45 percent increase instead of what we previously thought to be or what previously actually was and they've hot fixed it um it used to be 75 total now it's 45 but still very nice buffs nonetheless i don't think this makes her well it does make her a little worse but it do, i don't think it makes her less viable i still think it's an amazing signature item um then we jump over here into the exclusive furniture the change in this one is that it's going to last for 10 seconds um when it used to last for 14 and then it's going to be 250 percent of her defense converted when it used to be 350 so a little bit of a nerf there um but basically she's going whenever someone dies or ains dies she's going to go ham and uh basically just go nuts be immune to damage and control still a really nice effect and then she does get the 80 percent of damage converted into health so those are the two little changes that happen in the signature item a bit of a number squish by about 50 percent on both um or about probably 35 40 don't judge my maths but still really really solid we're just going to jump in here we're not going to do a play test i will do like a um oh uh, we don't even have the uh proper trials so that's not out yet but let's just jump in here, have a look at her abilities, because that's what I'm really keen to see. Put on times two so we get a good look at them. So there's the teleport to the ally with the stun. That's her jumping into the middle. Not huge damage, um, but obviously she's going to do some nice damage. And that's the teleport again. It's actually not too bad. I do, I do like the animations. I like the shield. The shield looks wicked. I like what they do with shields. I really like the way they make them unique. But as you can see... Fairly basic, um, get the teleports, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Not too bad. I'm cool. I'm cool with it. I, you know what I'd love to see, which I can't test here, which we're going to go over quickly. I'm curious to see, oh, we can't test it because she doesn't have furniture. And they don't give us any dimensionals here. Oh, yeah, we can't, yeah, we can't do the furniture thingy. Let's just do a quick test. Uh, let's go Lyca, because why not? Uh, we can't even make a faction bonus, can we? We can make a faction bonus with you guys. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Put it times four. I'm curious to see, which would be absolutely savage, and if they didn't do it, they should hot fix it and make it happen before the game, before this comes to global. Uh, we're going to lose here. Rip. Can Ezio do it? Can he dodge? He dodged? Yeah, <laughs> go Ezio. <laughs> sick. Um, sick, sick, sick. So yeah, she didn't do too much there. She's more support. The fact that we can't test her with her signature item and furniture really sucks. Um, but I'm really keen to see with her furniture item, item when she enrages, if she gets the armor. That would be an absolute sick thing to happen and i think they should make it happen because if she got her armor when she enraged oh that would be so sick anyway let's take a quick look at irons uh once the the trials thing does come out i'll do a full walkthrough of the trials as well but okay here we go uh chant last chant lasts five seconds uh after which let me just get the aim skills up um 406 percent damage is dealt to all enemy targets that's really strong obviously if he gets interrupted he's going to recover 500 energy so if he gets interrupted he does nothing goes down to 500 energy is basically the gist damage increased to 580 so 580 base multiplier is what we thought is huge absolutely huge anyway 
Uh, Ains normal attacks are changed. This ability is really going to interest me um, because basically he does a three stage attack. The first one is 240% single target, then 210% AoE, then short, short range AoE though. Uh, and then the final one is 180% damage, but prevents the enemy, single enemy, from using their ultimate for five seconds. Now, I don't know if this is going to make him viable for the Ice Shimura, which is something I'm really keen to test out. Um, it just depends on how long he takes to cast his passive at the start of the battle, whether Shimura is going to pop her ult once before he actually gets around to casting. That's the only thing that concerns me with it, but keen to see how it goes. Whether you can haste him up enough to boost the cast time of his original channel, not too sure. Um, but as you can see, we get some damage increases and then the true dark ability prevents them from using their ult for eight seconds so i feel like he's going to rotate through his basic attack enough but then it becomes weird against like something like the ice chimera because then once he does three ults and if you've got him maxed out and he starts channeling how long is that channel going to do and it's probably going to interrupt things so i'm not too sure but we'll have to wait and see i will definitely test the ice chimera as a strategy but an eight second lockout is really nice just throw that in against a lucius or something at the start of the battle and stop him from shielding to win ain't too bad um after 24 seconds of battle all enemies lose 30 percent of their health and are stunned for four seconds they lose 50 percent of current health so if they're if they're at 50 percent, they go down to 25 percent. it's not 50 max 50 50 current but still that's really strong that's really strong if you just bide your time um 24 seconds long the time to bide your time so i'm not too sure how that's going to work i was going to say if you wait to use his ult after that 24 seconds so you put it on manual you wait till he uses this they're all at 100 they drop down to 50 and then you use his ult they're dead but it might be too long to wait out 24 seconds is a long time in battle okay next one at the beginning of battle irons receives a shield equal to 40 percent of his max health which lasts for six seconds while the shield exists, Irons is immune to enemy control abilities and continues to chant, granting 70 energy points and a permanent 4% attack rating and 8% defense rating uh, per second. So <laughs> that is really nice. So 24% attack uh, gets added and 32% defense, but then uh, we do scale that up with the skills. Um, once the shield disappears, he ceases chanting. That's cool. So if he takes damage, he stops. If he finishes chanting, he stops. Uh, attack rating increased by 6%, defense increased by 10. So you're getting a 60% defense increase and a 36% attack increase. And once the attributes have been increased six times, he receives an additional 50 crit amplification and 30 attack speed points. And this is another thing contributing. So this is where I talk about him against Aishimura, the cast of six seconds. I don't know if Shimura takes six seconds before she casts her first ult. And then he's got to get through three basic attacks to do it. But if he gets the extra attack speed and you can haste him up with the twins and stuff like that, not sure if it's going to work. Maybe him with Laika might be a possible option for the Aishimura. Not too sure. We'll find out what happens, but this, that's that's a lot of boosting. That is a lot of boosting, and this 8 second lockout is huge. Obviously, the AoE damage is massive. Um, now, let's jump into the signature item. So, uh, basically, it is what we thought. He's going to do the yada, 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 where he does it two times. Then he's going to do it three times without channeling his ultimate. And then this one to get a nerf at 30, it's an extra 30% damage instead of the 50% that was data mined. Um, so they have adjusted that. Then we jump over to the exclusive furniture. Every eight seconds during battle, um, the damage and debuff duration of the magic caster ability is increased by 200%. Now, this one, we have to wait until testing because I still don't know how this works because they didn't really clarify this. This is actually um, a buff uh, because on the on the on the leak oh it's a buff and a nerf so on the data mine we had 12 seconds and 150 percent so the time it's actually no it's a buff every eight seconds so <laughs> i saw a lower number it's a buff so he's going to do it faster and it's going to be more percent it's 200 instead of 150 which is really really nice now like I said, I'm not sure if this stacks or whether it's like every eight seconds he gets a little buff where the next basic attack gets that bonus or whether the next three basic attacks, you know, going through that cycle get that bonus or whether it's like a permanent stacking buff, which I cannot see happening because that would be just 
busted Th then he'd, he'd be one shotting everything after 10 seconds and it would make him too godly for bosses so i think it's just gonna be a one-time thing but whether it's one time for one cast or one time for each individual cast we'll have to wait and see uh, the effects of the ability goal of all life is death will take uh, effect 15 seconds into the battle so i mean 15 seconds is better than waiting 24 seconds could be an idea wait 15 seconds he does that stuns everyone and then he ults and then they're all dead i mean could be a thing we'll have to wait and see anyway let's check out i haven't even actually looked at these so i want to check out his abilities let's go let's put on times two that's a cool channel at the start that looks really cool not gonna lie looks really cool Okay, that's the single target. Okay, and then, oh, that's cool. Oh, dude, that is wicked. That is wicked. That is absolutely savage. I love this dude's animations. Look at that. Boom. Oh, I love it. It just whitens the whole screen. That's epic. That's epic. That's absolutely epic. I love it. So the the ball is his basic attack, which does single target damage. The two little beams that come in, shoot lightning, are going to be the one that's going to do AOE damage. And then the, the dark void one's going to be the canceling ult. But this guy is going to be so damn good. Like, obviously, you want Alberto with him to get the extra damage increases. But I honestly think he's going to be good just by himself. I cannot wait till the 21st. Screw Christmas this year. I'm hanging out till the 21st of <laughs> December. I don't care about Christmas anymore. I just want to get this guy. <laughs> okay, anyway, so we didn't guys. test him in this, and I thought we just got to test him, see how quick he can board wipe. So let's do this. Uh, we, we're definitely going to put Arthur in there uh, for the put it, give him some haste. Well, if we're putting Arthur, we may as well put the Gwyneth in there as well. Uh, we may as well put the Estrilda in there as well. And I mean, why not do the Scrag? Actually, no, we'll do you. Get the bonus. Okay, let's see how this goes. I lo <laughs> love these animations. Okay, go. I'm leaving it on two. We'll do two times speed. So he, he does take a while to start channeling when he comes into battle. But I mean, he gets that massive energy boost. So like, it's not too bad, but he doesn't get any energy from dealing damage at the start. So it takes him a long time to go. And like, the enemy team's dead before he even gets to do anything. <laughs> but it looks savage. <laughs> looks savage. So obviously Gwyneth topped that one because we took Gwyneth. And wait, wait. Okay, we can try that again. So let's try that again without Gwyneth because Gwyneth was the issue there. So if we go that, 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 we'll just put you, we'll put you, and we'll put like, Namora, because we don't want to use forks. We don't want the stuff banished. So let's go here. So let's see how long it takes actually before he's done. So we're down. We're up, we're up to ten seconds. Seven. Ten. Okay, so it was like thirteen seconds before he started doing anything, which is a really long time. Which is a really long time. And then he gets hit. Mm. We'll have to see how this plays out. Okay, now he's going to require a lot of play testing. Because yes, he's really strong. I don't know how well he's going to do end game when you've got to wait 13 seconds before him doing anything. So you're effectively... You're effectively at a 4v5 for 13 seconds from, from how I could see when he stopped casting. So if we go into that again, fortunately we have to do this layout again. Um, okay, I'm I'm honestly not too sure on irons now. We'll have to see. Let's put let's put forks in for the bonus and the banish. So he doesn't he doesn't finish channeling for ages. Okay, 12 seconds. So he did it at 18. He did his first basic attack. Hmm. Unfortunately, that K-Source took no damage because obviously the enemy team has the Taylene, so she's going to heal as he does the damage, which kind of sucks. And keeping in mind, actually, having said that, with his... 
Okay, with his signature item, he's going to cast it instantly. So he's going to get to the ult faster. I don't know. I'm curious to see. This is going to take a lot of testing because the whole idea of being down a hero at the start of the battle is really going to hurt. But it's whether you can put a team together that's going to keep things together until then. Also, you could just put him in the front line, let him take a little bit of damage, have things to protect him so that it bursts his shield so he can start doing stuff earlier. I don't know. Have to think about it. We'll take some play testing, but I don't care because this guy's ult looks savage. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.